and welcome to the Reapers. So another educational video for the vegan. There's plenty of the vegan to do, so we're gonna have lots of videos for it today. It's the much requested Elint pod and Elint data video. So my understanding of an Elint pod is what I know from the SU25, an extremely advanced version of the Elint pod. Uh, is it is a passive unit to detect radiation from SAM systems and plot their positions now like I said it's very sophisticated in the SU-25 if it's even a real version at all I'm not sure um, but I'm guessing it's similar in the Vigan but uh, a bit simpler a bit older and less effective is that right what would you say, think yeah the is? so all the pod is gonna do is gonna listen out for SAM uh, systems and all it can really tell is the direction that they're in it doesn't know how far away they are uh, so the way that we are going to actually pinpoint where things are is by flying around, we'll find a SAM, point our jammers at it, it'll get one direction, then we'll fly around a bit more, maybe sort of rotate roughly around where we think the SAM is, and then we'll get another direction, and uh, those two lines will intersect at a point. Hmm. And that is what we'll do is our guess as to where the SAM system is. Does it work uh, in collaboration with the INS system then on the, on the, on the bird? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it knows where the where you were at the, uh, at a particular time and where what direction it uh, saw that SAM system in. Mm -hmm. uh, it also records things such as the pulse repetition frequency and the band and so forth of the uh, the SAM system, and including how long it uh, the pulse was on and off. And from all that information, you can work out what kind of SAM it is. Mm. So, for example, if it's got a uh, an on time of half a second and off time of two seconds is probably a, a, a search radar because it's only pinging mm -hmm. around very slowly. Mm -hmm. But if it's much, much faster, then it's probably a track radar. Oh, and there is a hand chart I found, and maybe you can link it, mm -hmm. uh, which gives you all the info on that. Interesting. Um, and so the actual practical use for this is like a big campaign we're doing at the moment, the coffee campaign, where there's hundreds of SAMs dotted all over the place and we don't know the locations because it's kind of a realistic campaign. We send out the Vigans with their Elin pods. They do Elin runs and find the locations of these SAMs. Then the next day, we plot strike missions based on that coordinate data. So we use it in a dynamic, in, uh, interactive sense like that. Okay, right, Blood, what do we have to arm up? So, uh, the, all you need is the U-22A jammer, uh, however, I'd also get the KB dispenser pod on the opposite pylon, just to balance the weight out, and it's useful having uh, countermeasures. Right, there's got the KB dispenser on the right. I didn't know we had a gun pod, bloody hell. It does. Jesus Christ, anything we don't have. Right, I'm going to have to do that at some point. Right, a, um, there's a jammer on one side, and what's on the other side? Uh, the KB dispenser pod. It's under pods. It should be only and is it, one is thing it, you can put in there. Is it the U22A jammer? It's the U22A, yeah. It's the A is uh, an upgraded variant on the 22. Is that the Elint then? Is that the Elint pod? Yes, so the 22 can't do Elint. It can only do jamming, but the A, they added uh, basic Elint capabilities. Right, and have you got... Uh, we've got fuel tanks on in the middle. Uh, yep, yeah, I've got a fuel tank on. Okay. Uh, now, fans, today we have Sherman in his first in his brand new Vigan, in his first ever drive in the Vigan. So let's see what you can do, Sherman. Right, Sherman's got his. Right, now we're going to have to do some setting up on the right console, I believe, from memory. For yes, so it's all dead simple. Uh, all you have to do is set the jammer operation mode selector to alpha. Hang on, just got to just find out what jammer is alpha. I thought it was mine already was, but okay. Yep, and this is just, it, this is the essentially the Elin mode. Yep. And then on the right, the jammer band selector, Foxtrot puts it into a preheat mode, uh, so it's basically off, uh, but you can turn it on an instant. Uh, however, modes G through K uh, essentially change the sensitivity of the, the jammer pod, so whether it will ignore weak signals over strong ones and so forth. Uh, however, if you put it into kilo, it swaps between the two, so it goes from low sensitivity to high sensitivity mode, so that's what I'm going to use today, pop that in kilo. kilo. Uh, do we care about the suspension, in fact? Uh, yes, since we will be... I generally use uh, mode 1 on the uh, countermeasures operation mode selector. And this is essentially, when you press the button, it will dispense flares continuously for about a minute and a half. And okay. when we're flying low level later, it will prove most useful. Right, brakes set. Throttle up to 4 mil power. Ready, go! So we're looking to rotate, probably we're fairly light today, so about 250. 
priority. Should I gear up lead? I know. Lead, I always leave the uh, gear up until you hit 300 because oh, really? it uh, puts the flaps up. Oh, I, um, I've been putting mine off on takeoff on runway. Yeah, there's also a load of symbology you get for the takeoff uh, that disables if you put the gear up on the ground. So the, the actual view of the jammer pod, it's about 60 degrees horizontally and 45 degrees vertically. And it's also vertically stabilized, so even if your aircraft is pointing quite steeply down, it's still looking at the horizon. Cool. So that's the kind of area you want to point any uh, SAM system in and then it will uh, get a good fix on it. It can also use the RWR in order to assist, but it's less accurate. Did you get up, Pogo Sherman? Yeah, yeah, I can. See, well, I can't see him, but I can see his shadow on the sea. And we're going to go to nine zero percent now. It's nine zero percent RPM. It's the uh, the dial just above the three afterburner lights, Jim. Kind of hoping to get some kind of nails around now, but yeah, it's a bit weird. I'm sure Coffee Sam Net will uh, unveil itself in its full glory. And the wings at level now. There we go. There so uh, we've got our first nails. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And that should be going into the Elim pod. Beautiful. Oh, and it's gone. <laughs> Cap's still got so, nails. So unfortunately, you don't really get any feedback from this until you land. Yeah, Roger. So all internal to the pod. There's there's absolutely nothing in the cockpit that'll tell you uh, whether it's working or not. CSU25 one processes it in real time and puts it on your HUD. It's amazing. Is it realistic? I don't know. I have no idea. Because we did some research and the SU25 Tango, Sherman thinks or someone thought it didn't even exist. So it's interesting. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if they uh, sort of took an amalgamation of different mm. different models and made a, a new one. I must say, I was hoping for more from the RWR, because there's an S300 site out there. Or should be at least. You definitely got day two, right? Yeah, um, I have a theory that when running on small servers, the um, uh, SAMs have a, a knack of not turning themselves up. Oh, there we go. There was something. Right, I want everyone to get a loose formation. Cap backing off. Right, we better start looking for launches then. So we are going to roll to the right and get out to sea. Roger. Right, roll now. Is that a launch? Sounds and we're going to turn. We're going to turn on to bearing one five zero. Five zero. Yeah, I don't really know what's out. It could be some mampads or nasties. So, for the moment, we're just going to steer out to sea. And wings level now. That's a track radar. Yep. Launch. Put your countermeasures on if you got them. Countermeasures on. Burn. Get those lovely angles. So the technique you want is 
Roll, pull, level. Roger. Roll, pull, level. So just keep going for that in your head. Roll, pull, level. This was just a nice weave, and with your stage afterburner, pretty much no missile can beat that. If, um... What the earth is that? Well, at least we got some nails. Yeah, it's really going for it. Right, cap Speed's is... dropping tank. Cap's clean. Cap is not clean. Two tank. Right, I lost the track radars. Oh, no, this blood. Is, we got one from the right, or left even. You're not dead, are you? No, I accidentally jettisoned my um, missiles, but it didn't drop anything, so I'm okay. No, no, it's fine. Uh, you can't drop them. No, I'm okay. It's okay. I just I got all confused in there. Uh, just keep heading on a bearing of... We'll go 180. Should get us away from everything. Roger. Are you still stage 3? Mm, almost no, stage 1. Roger. That track road I'm detecting there might be you guys, because I'm quite far out here. Are you still with me? Uh, uh, roughly in the vicinity. Yeah, yes, yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you, yep. Alright, that was all interesting. It's good though. I wonder how many radars are locking us up at the moment. Oh, shit though. Many. It's still that one track radar, I can't seem to... It's gotta be a 300. Yeah, Yeah, but it uh, shouldn't be able to catch us out here. We've got way too much energy. Mm -hmm. And it's lost. Well, let's gain a little bit of altitude. Okay, so just stay in a loose formation because we're going to need to the freedom to maneuver just in case we get any more missiles launched at us. Hey, firm. Um, Leveling off there. Right, I'm completely clean of uh, radar signals now. Yeah, go back to 9-0%, you don't want to waste too much fuel. Ready for them. And we're going to go for a left roll. We're going to turn back in. Whoop, so, whoop. the, um, the, the sort of, the, the average, sorry, no, the position you get from the Elint pod is, can be quite inaccurate. And the way you improve the accuracy is by getting the mm. signal from quite drastically different angles. So if we imagine you get a, you get a, a lock or a, a track radar pointed at 120, and then you get another one at uh, 125 after you've moved a bit, the margin for error on that is quite large. So yep. if you know it's not a perfect pod, uh, there would be a little bit of noise on it, and you, that could cause you to be 10 kilometers off or something, potentially much worse. So ideally, we want to fly on one side of the, the SAM, get our direction, and then fly round to the other side and get another, another one there. I'll do that. I believe the best you can do is uh, get your reports at 90 degree angles to each other. So if you would go on the one side and then go all the way around to the far side, uh, that's not actually that helpful because you've just got a one straight line and you don't know where the two really intersect. Ava. So you need the two lines to be uh, orthogonal, is the, uh, the mathematical word. Okay, let's just go for a gentle roll back inland. Unfortunately, we have the slight disadvantage that our jammers are not emitting anything. So it's a lot easier for people to lock us up. Mm -hmm. I see, so they're passive only at the moment. Yep. <coughs> and... Uh, they are not actively emitting anything mm. or even when they so when you turn the jammer mode on it doesn't emit unless it receives a signal so they're completely silent until let's say an aircraft radar pings it mm. and then it will send back a pulse of you know, jamming noise mm. in order okay. to confuse it but it means it's not constantly emitting giving your position away Over. <clears throat> Because it is actually quite a, an advanced piece of kit, at least uh, DCS-wise. I think it's sort of mid-90s, mm -hmm. is the U-22A. So it's a very uh, advanced pod, but obviously the aircraft itself is quite old, so you don't uh, have any nice screens or anything to display that information. Okay, okay I've got a NAILS at 060. <coughs> NAILS, yep. Probably that S-300 site. Yep. 
And there's a track radar. Right, let's have a look out for that launch. Track. Yep, it's a lovely big vertical launch, it'll be. Yeah, it should be dying. Tally, left, left, 10 o'clock, launch S300. Advise oh, turn yes. right quick. Yeah, let's go for a left roll. We'll go stage one after, stage two after the burner, actually. And we'll point ourselves, we'll go for about 310. This is where blood learns how powerful an S300 is, Sherman. Yeah, they're not really that useful against Viggins. Look at the millions of them. Right, let's go countermeasures and go full power and we'll go 290. Full power, 290. Level. And we're going to put our jammers in Bravo. Jammers, Bravo. Turn on to 270. 270. Oh, look at them. I think they're going for some of you. And we'll turn for 240. And there's a lot of missiles. <laughs> a lot of missiles. And going back to stage one. And I'm going to roll on to 260. Right, I scratched them, but I, they might still be going for you, I'm not sure. Roger, I'm still uh, giving me some moves. You should be able to see them, they're currently all out my right hand window. I have such a. Uh, yeah, I'd lose you if I do that, though, so I'm just going to. And I'm putting my jammer back into Alpha. Jammer Alpha, cap clean. Right, I think we have enough information to show you the kind of basics Roger. of what you're going to receive. So we're going to land, and then afterwards we'll do something a bit more exciting. Roger, reforming. So where's fuel on this thing? Uh, right hand side below the uh, distance indicator. And wings level now. What's indicator? So you know on the so you know where the afterburn three afterburn lights are. Yeah. To the right of that is the fuel gauge. Okay. Uh, it's so, in percentage, yeah. so 125 percent means you've got a fuel tank. Once it drops below 100, that means you're on internal fuel, and when it's zero, you're in trouble. Roger that. Right. How should we do this? When do you want me to land first and show? Show them how it's done, or it'll be fine. Just go in, three-man break would be fine. Roger. In which case, we are going to land on runway. I think it's zero seven. So we're going to do a left and a right. Left roll now. A little bit tight here, so it might be a bit of a pull. And right roll now. Okay, bit of a pull. When we go wings level, uh, I don't know who's on the left, but you have permission to break. Wings level now. I'm moving to the right, you can break first. Lead. Lead breaking. Two, break. Okay, reverser on. Down to speed, down to attitude. This is a little bit tight. I'd recommend showing you extend a bit. Cap final zero seven. Then. Just to give you more time to get set up. Cap gear down, cap reverser on. Reverse on, extending to the downwind. Get her down, shall we? That was a bit iffy. I tried to get it really short. Yeah, I, saw but, that. Uh, I caught the uh, the little bit of a mound shortly before the runway. Lol. Okay, then. We're all alive. Just don't turn off yet because I'm coming in. Uh, I'm going over to the left. Okay, I'm going over to the right. So we'll just go down to the far end of the runway, turn around. Those are on. 
And stopped. Uh, just when you're on the ground, put your system into BER. Done. And look at your knee board. Stand by. And you should find a page entitled Elint. Uh, the writing is a bit small. I believe there is a fix for that, but I think a bit of zoom can't right. solve. Right, so I'm on the knee board. I'm ground crew, waypoint, air bases, radio, air bases, ref reference points? Uh, nope, Elint. Elint! And you can see you've got that. You've got eight emitters, I have at least. Yeah. And it gives you the frequency band it's in, the pulse repetition frequency, when you first saw the signal, when you didn't. And the most important thing, can you see it says uh, NW and SE on the last line of each? Uh -huh. What this is, it's giving you coordinates for a northwest point and a southeast point. Okay. Uh, from that, you can draw a rectangle, and the emitter ah. is somewhere in that rectangle. So and the aim of the game is the more different angles or the more different directions that we found that emitter at, the smaller yeah. that rectangle is going to be. Now, right. I imagine some of these, that rectangle is going to be enormous, basically useless. Oh, but some of them might be very, very small. Okay. Oh, let's let see. me see the Sherman coming in quickly. Good. Power to idle. We'll break on, slam that wheel down, power up. Perfect. You Control don't go idle. Hold on, Sherman, your first big landing. Better than mine. Don't, don't put the power to idle. Power uh -huh. stays on all the way through. Oh, okay. Because the idea is that when you when your back wheels hit, you have that second where the thrust of us engages. And then, as long as you got your wheel brakes on, the front wheel will slam down, keep the thrust reverser on, and it will also just activate, and you'll slow down much quicker. Hey, for no need to reduce the thrust. Let's have, just have a quick look at that E-Lint. Right, so, yeah, so we need, all we need is a little, just a little, um, uh, uh Excel, um, clever. Uh, well, I'm thinking of written, I've already written a MATLAB program that plots this on a map of the Caucasus. Lovely, perfect. Right, so yeah, we can go and plot these, uh, these, uh, these rectangles yep. on our map now. We've and got in nice. addition to being yeah. in your, uh, your knee board, it's also in a nice file in the DCS.ags37 folder ah, in your save games. very nice. Called elint.info, I believe. And you can open it with any text editor, and that exact information you're seeing there will appear. Very good. Okay, so that's right. that. Shall we go and have some fun then? Right, uh, this is our second go round. Blood, explain what we're going to do, and uh, then we'll be off. So, we are going to fly through the middle of this sound net with RWR a bleeping, and go to secure me. We're going to turn around and come back. And in the meantime, all that nice bleeping would have been restored in our Elid pods. And then we'll hopefully get some nice accurate information as to where the uh, the SAMs that were blooping at us are. Hey firm, two ready. So, regards to things you need to do to not die. If you if it's just a, a regular nails, it's fine. But if you start getting a track, look where the direction is and try and put a tree, a mountain, a building, anything between you and it. Hey, firm. It doesn't have to be very long. You lose that lock temporarily, and the mist will be scratched because you're travelling so fast it has no chance to reacquire. Hey, firm. So we will be flying extremely low. We brakes set, throttle up, ready, go. Date. Yeah, up. And go straight into trail formation. Trail. Trail. Top of the stage one. And rolling left. So don't be obsessed with following the person in front of you. If you need to dive in a particular direction to avoid a SAM, a tree, a building, whatever, do it. You've got the nav point for Sakumi, so if you get, uh, if you lose us, just fly towards it. Right. Uh, 
And I'd also suggest if you get spiked for too long and you can't seem to lose it by dodging below anything, then you just put your camper measures on for a bit and hopefully that'll uh, at least scratch it or call, uh, give it a harder time to lock you. Copy. Let's do this. Yeah, you'll enjoy the vegan Sherman. It's all like this, it's all low, flying around sands. It's all well good fun. Yeah, if we don't do altitude. Mm. Mm, I've noticed. Just remember to get that trim right. I prefer to have yeah. a bit of up trim on my vegan just for extra safety. No, the trick is you want to have perfect trim. So the trick with low-level flying is it's actually quite a lot more considered than you might think. It's not thrashing the stick around. Mm -hmm. You need to pick a direction, pick where you're going to go, and just point your aircraft there, and you pretty much let go of the stick. Obviously, keep your hands on it, but you're not putting any pressure. You have to be careful of the transonic effect, though, in this plane. Yeah, that's why yeah, you I don't go... I noticed it earlier, the nose-down effect. Mm -hmm. now, you never go supersonic when doing low-level unless you are really in trouble. Because, yeah, it's hard work. And we're going to go back to 9-0%. 9-0%. You need that extra energy to ditch a missile or turn a corner a bit harder, then go to stage one. I'm sucking up all that uh, radiation at the moment into my pod. Suck it up. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do a little bit of a weave through the, uh, the sort of coastal plain in order to get as many directions from uh, the radars as possible. But over this next crest is where things are going to get more exciting. Be fairly quiet so far. You can tell when we're concentrating. Mm -hmm. We are literally a couple of feet from hitting things. Uh, another piece of advice as well don't follow the contours unless you're at the bottom of a valley. It's a very quick way to get yourself killed is if you're following on the edge of a hill and therefore everybody below you can see you. Mm -hmm. if you want to get down, if you're coming down, you want to get down as fast as possible. I believe we call that skylining in armor, don't we, Shem? Yes, but in skylining, is it equal because you stay in one place? Missile launch? Spike. Missile launch. Find a tree. Is it, it's not a launch, it's a spike. If I'm? Doesn't it mean... You probably will be followed by missile launch like that on the... Left, I'm going stage one. Okay, I'm just going to drop behind this hill and should lose that. That's that. 
One thing I really need to get used to is not being able to roll over to um, pull across the ground. Too much hornetry. Okay, and that's that spike lost. And yeah, we're going to roll left. Flag. Okay. You know you're doing this right when the radar altimeter says you're at zero meters. <laughs> or you're in Holland. Charlotte. There's QB City in front of us. 30 certain coffees hidden all sorts of nasty things yeah. in there. So we'll, we'll work around the outskirts, I think. Okay. Lots of little uh, gaps in these trees are very nice. Oh, no, we are just going to go straight through the center. That's not where I was expecting us to be. This is fine. There's the spike. These turns are quite good though, because you can just uh, weave through the buildings. Uh -huh. Missiles can't go through buildings, I found. Unless it's Hollywood, of course. Of course. Oh, cruise ship. Go to stage well, just to get across the harbour. Whoa, missile went right past my fucking window! <laughs> yeah, that'll be that. Beautiful. Okay, we're getting fairly close to the airbase. We won't overfly it because it's covered in all sorts of nasties. Okay. But I think we'll roll left and then we'll turn around so we'll briefly point our noses at the airbase to hopefully get some nice spikes in there. And then we'll uh, go back home. So this is the ethos of the B1, the original B1A, wasn't it, as well? Flying like this low to get past the SAMs and the F111. Okay, we're rolling right now. Go stage mm -hmm. one. Get around the corner nice quickly. The difference is the Iron Fark is meant to carry a f enormous munitions load by comparison. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean this thing can take two tons, which is not too shabby, but not too shabby in its own right. But the but the Iron Fark is still a massive bomb load in this right. Okay, we're a little bit exposed up here, so we're just gonna get a bit lower. Now we'll carry on around to the right. You still with us, sure, mate? Loot from a ways behind you, but I'm tracking. Beautiful. What a tight turn this one. Just be careful in turns as well because your RWR is uh, is blind to the underside, so you can think hard right yeah, under the sand. When yeah. in fact, it's, uh, look at it, your nice large underbelly on its radar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you tend to learn that quite quickly when you're flying any sort of a fighter. You realise that there's dead zones, or you die. Yeah, but luckily here you should be rolling level and going in lots of directions, so you should. Any blind spot should be cleared pretty quickly. Oh, that sounds like a spike from the front. It's rolling left. A lot of countermeasures. Countermeasures. Don't put countermeasures on unless you're actually getting spiked. There's no point. Let's see if we ditch that down spike. Oh, and then he got a compressor stall there. Shouldn't be going slow enough to get compressor stalls. I heard it rattling. <laughs> this is like Back through the QB City.
He's got being tank. Oh, I can't do it. I can't do it with when we're so low. I'm actually going to try yeah, doing I, it now. I uh, I learned to bind one of my keys to Yeah, it. I thought we needed we ended it. And we'll go to stage one after the other way down. Home. And I, damn, I've lost you. Can you put some countermeasures out? Mm. Countermeasures are out. Tally! Coming. Countermeasures are out. But if in doubt, follow the coast all the way back up until you, there's no more bleeps and then you should be at Sochi. Yeah, Coffee has built a seriously comprehensive sum there, yeah? This is what we've had to clear out over the past mm -hmm. few days. Right, it's sitting just about 50% of fuel. Bear in mind, I forgot to refuel and rearm in the second uh, run around. So did you. Yeah, I had to clear my mind from uh, other things for some reason. I just had this note, this feeling like there was something right up in my face and it was driving me nuts. Oh, that's a new one. Go! Ah! Come for her! Cup's hit by my okay. That's a shield cut. Woohoohoo! That was nasty. Yeah, I got that spike as well. Missiles in the air. No, scratch that. I'm okay. Ah, it's the shield cut, don't worry. Oh. I thought we were back at Sochi then for a moment, then I realised my distance uh, a meter was in Swedish miles and not kilometres. Uh, uh, five kilometres away. Oh no, we're 50 kilometres away. Ah. No, I can't risk it, even. Mm. And no warning whatsoever. Oh, you're hit. Got it. Fuck you, blow me blood. Come on, pop out, pop out, pop out. Did you just fly through wires? Nope. I've lost blood. Are you still going straight? Uh, no, I'm... we just follow the coast. I don't... that's annoying. I shall take this opportunity to uh, bind the dispenser. So, the key bind, is it fast countermeasure dispense? Yes. I think I'm clear of the sound that now, just on the way home to Sochi. Hey, Phil, what's the distance? Uh, it's 30 kilometers. Uh, Roger, let me try my Mel. 30 seconds of uh, Hey, firm. Mel confirms. I'm all shot up, I've lost an elevator, uh, but I can fly. Uh, not an elevator, an elevator, or whatever they call it. Oh, uh, cannot. No, at the back, one of my controllers at the back. I hear lost one, you'll be alright. So I'm all wonky, but yeah. Now I've had to land like this before and I have to keep going fast, otherwise I lose authority. Then you didn't lose the control surface that would have counteracted your little mm. rudder problem. That'd be nice.
Uh, so what are good key points to have apart from the weapons and trim? Fuck it, no hydraulics, no air brakes. Come on, little plane. Yes, we have gear. We have gear. And the box down. Cap's coming in for an unconventional landing with not much control. Okay, oh. We're good. We're good. Right. Where's the landing height so I can turn this annoying thing on? Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Ah, uh, no control of anything! Ah! Everything's okay. Don't worry about anything. Oh, that was the weirdest landing we've ever done. Right, well, it's a good job we didn't die, because otherwise that, uh... Look at that! Big otherwise the alien data will be for nothing. Nah, alien data will be nothing. I'll uh, be into the wrong way, stand by. Nope, I'm gonna have to do it here. Nope, I can't turn. Yeah, so, what you do is stop, put your master mode to be ER. And take a look at your elite data. Roger, stand by. Stop telling me I'm blown up, I'm fine. Right, elite data, K. I have 10 emitters now. Stand by. 10 emitters! Right, so we've got all that information for that super cool run. How interesting. Right, well, that is our full guide of our alien then that's pretty awesome almost oh my goodness. um we'll do a bit of a cut here but i will be back in about five to ten minutes and i should hopefully get you some nice pictures of what that data shows hey fam right and so we have here we have the final uh, uh outcome which run was this oh is this both run runs combined yes so yes my so my data is from uh, both runs combined all right so these are boxes uh that show where uh, so it could be anywhere in that box, is that right? Or is it most likely to be yes, in the centre so of the box? Yes, so the little marker tells you where the centre of the box is, uh, yeah. but yeah, the it could be anywhere in the box. You could use your you know, brain a bit to think that, for example, the one on the left is not out to sea. So that does cut and narrow it down a bit. Uh, and also, so this is, for the viewers, this is a programme that I wrote to interpret the data that you receive from the Edent and uh, plot it on a map dynamically so you can move this around and as you can see it even tells you uh, what the SAMs are uh, by looking at the things such as the the frequency the the pulse repetition frequency etc and comparing it to a list of known SAMs and for example here it's found that uh, that one is an SE6 and as you can see the the box around it is actually very very small so we know that with a pretty good degree of accuracy. So we've really got that SA6 then? Yeah, so it, what that means is, is that we got it from lots of different angles, and from that it was able to narrow down the exact location of it. And um, what are the other boxes, what size are those boxes, what kind of scale is this map? I can't see any... Um, a couple of... It's, uh, it's, yeah, they're about... Ooh, I think... For example, the one at the top left is about three kilometres by five kilometres. Yeah. Okay, so you could you could narrow it down and, and get some eyes on that area then and go and track that SAM down. Yeah, you could probably either get some satellite imagery as we've been doing in the coffee campaign or you could just get an aircraft by, take some photos of it. Cool. All right, viewers, well, I hope you enjoyed that. It shows the real uh, depth of DCS, how it, how it, you know, it, uh, it simulates these elimp pods properly and uh, even throws in the in in inaccuracies for you. So, uh, cool. Right, anything to add, Blood, before we sign off? I don't think so. Lovely. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later.